Hello everyone, welcome to a session number six of EART 22101 Evolution and Paleobiology. I'm recording this in November 2021 as a storm is blowing through, so it's coming out coming down the stair rods outside to quote Paddington the movie, so I'm very pleased to be indoors. I'm recording this new introductory video for macro evolution. So before I get on to what we're going to be covering uh, over the course of uh, the videos and the in-person sessions for macro evolution, I just wanted to note that I have sent out a vote, an email regarding a vote to all of you about the future delivery of this course regarding whether we should have a video series and a blended learning approach or whether we should be doing things as traditional lectures. So if you've not voted on that and you're watching this um, and it's before the deadline that I set, please do vote on that. So. Today we're going to be talking about macroevolution. That is a very broad topic, so there's lots of things I could be talking about. But what I've done is I've narrowed our, our lecture down, or this session down, to some key concepts that I think are really, really interesting. And I've distilled those into this lecture, or these videos, for you today. So these are basically looking at some key questions and some key processes um, in uh, macro evolution. So today we're going to be looking at adaptation. So adaptation drives evolution at a small and a big scale. And we've not really covered it yet in much depth, so I'm going to quickly introduce that in our first video. We're going to then move on to looking at macro evolution more broadly. And don't worry, I, I realize I've not defined macro evolution, so I'll be doing that in video number two. I note that this is the video that um, I would normally be putting something about speciation in because that speciation is a key concept when it comes to evolution at a big scale. But also, Rob covered speciation in um, session number two for this course, so it's not included here. But just bear in mind that that would very happily sit as a topic that we could be including in this lecture. And it's a really important aspect of microevolution. In fact, you could argue that it is the bridge between micro and macro evolution, if you believe um, micro and macro evolution are appropriate terms for us to be using. And we'll be talking about that further down the line. Um, after that, I um, will be introducing a few of the key concepts that we um, will be covering. And in particular, I'll be focusing in that particular video on molecular clocks and what those are. Clocks allow us to look at evolutionary rates. So I'll be talking about those um, in the following video. And then if we are continuing with the blended learning, I will be talking about a particular um, instance of um, evolution or a particular process in evolution where rates are really important called adaptive radiations in person. And then finally, um, we'll be wrapping up this session on macroevolution by looking at something called evolu EvoDevo, that's evolutionary developmental biology. And we'll also be looking at where this interfaces with the fossil record. So what we may call paleo -Evo -Devo. So I hope that will all be really interesting. I find it really, really interesting to cover. As with the other sessions that I've, I've done for you, I think it's also worth highlighting why all of this matters. So why does macroevolution matter? Well, actually, this matters uh, for the same reasons that learning about evolution as a whole matters. It's the basis, evolution that is, of all life sciences. As I said in the first year evolution workshop that many of you um, attended uh, earlier, this year, last academic year, I suppose, evolution underlies all aspects of living systems. That includes systems that impact directly on us. So for example, our food and our, our crops and their pollinators, all of those are subject to evolutionary um, uh, processes. Um, antimicrobial resistance is an aspect of evolution. And the responses of modern day ecosystems to climate change will of course be under underlain, underpinned, dictated by, I suppose is a better word, by evolutionary processes. So for all of those reasons, I think that um, studying macroevolution is a really important thing for us to do. I hope by the end of this series of videos and or lecture, depending on how we end up delivering it, you will agree with me. I will see you just down the page in the first video for this session. See you soon.